are listening to the Space Tastic Mysteries podcast. We are in week 16 of Anna Gailine's latest novel, The Light Years, involving a mobile Alliance surgical hospital battling an epidemic at the front lines of the Freedom Alliance Crimson Fleet War. This is episode 16, The Memory Flood. If you have not subscribed, do so now. And if you are on YouTube, hit the bell to be notified of new episodes. But you didn't. I do now. Maybe I didn't know anyone on the other side who had anything to tell me until now. Is this the way our relationship is going to go? Are you always going to question everything I say and do? I will whenever you say things that are illogical. Drew came over to me and studied my readings. After scrutinizing them intensively, he looked back at Jake and concluded, I tend to think she is right because her readings are off the charts. And your response should have been, No. You are not falling for this dream business, are you? Jake retorted, hands on hips. I don't have to fall for it. She told you my wife experiences this phenomenon all the time. Dot and the fact that Jessa and her father have it as well tells me it is not just because we see strange phenomenon in our corner of the galaxy. Logical, I countered, shuddering as I felt a sudden chill. Is it logical to believe that this dimension is the only one with any relative information? Is it logical only to deal with what you can see and prove in this dimension when we have encountered strange phenomenon before? Maybe our answer lies in what we cannot see. If I were you, Bria said to Jake, I'd listen to her. I have experienced such phenomena too. I darted my eyes from Bria to Drew several times before I admitted, we are looking for a chip that has my research on it. It is in a place I used to spend my time the most while I was in captivity. I have no idea where it was. Like Jake, I have Swiss cheese memory when it comes to this place. I looked around me and realized we were in the spacecraft. Does Stefan know you took me here? Bria confirmed, he does. I confessed, pulling myself into an upright position. I am not sure that is a good idea. I don't know why, but there is a check in my gut regarding him. Bria fixed me with an even stare, folding her arms across her chest. She returned. I don't know why. He is a great guy. He has always been there for us. I get that. He was for me when I was in here too. But this place has a way of turning people and not in a good way. I want us to be careful. My gut is rarely wrong. It is this time, she decided, turning to Jake. I think I am on your side. I know you are both wrong, Drew expressed, touching my hand. Danny only makes warnings like that when she feels it is absolutely necessary. Remember when we worked on the Eisenhower together? You led the landing party, and told us that you didn't trust the food the inhabitants gave us? We all ate it. You were the only one of us that did not get dreadfully ill. I refused to doubt your gut after that. I still have nightmares about that. I think the chip is in that laboratory. I just don't know where. It's like it is right on the tip of my tongue, but I cannot recall it. I do not even know if the laboratory is the correct place. My visitors told me that I dream of the place. I cannot remember dreaming of this place, except in my nightmares. I can imagine, Drew agreed, looking at my readings. How do we fix your device? You are running a high fever. Please hand it to me. I watched Drew unfix the device from my arm and give it to me. I set it up and asked, can you please reattach it? When he did, he questioned, are you going to market this? You can make a lot of money. I would love to be one of your investors. I think it has real potential. Just then my Quan pad chimed. I grabbed it off the nightstand and studied it for a few moments, showing it to Drew. He nodded. I've got to get out of here and find that chip. You aren't well enough to go anywhere. Drew advised me as he witnessed me rip the lines out of my arms. He put his hand on my arm to stop me. We don't have time to worry about me right now. I have the medications in my device. I broke away from him. We are running out of time to figure this out. I have to get back to the laboratory. Not the one we were just in. The other one. If we take the underground tunnels to the south side. It is, um, I don't exactly remember, but I know it is there somewhere. The tunnel is under this building. Let's go, Drew. You two, stay here. Bria and Jake appeared confused. Jake required. Why does he get to go? He stared at Drew because he didn't decide I was crazy like you too. I would rather have someone who believes in my gut and my dreams than someone who decided I was crazy because he cannot believe what he cannot see. You cannot see air, 
You cannot see electricity. You cannot see. I am coming with you. I am your partner, and she is your sister. I shook my head. I cannot stop you from following us, but if you treat me like I am stupid, I will figure this out without you. That is my condition. They took a deep breath and decided in unison. Okay. I motioned them to the doors. I led them through the exit. Minutes later, we moved through the tunnels. Jake persisted. How long until we get there? It will take as long as it takes. Why are you being so cold? Demanded Jake who followed me. Bria and Drew behind him. I don't know if you understand how disrespectful and dismissive you have been of my dreams and my gut feelings. You don't have to agree. You just have to be respectful to what I believe and what I know to be the truth. You act like I am being delusional. Have you ever known me to be delusional? That dream said that I was given quadruple the disease, Drew confirmed that. If that was true, then what makes you think the rest of the dream would be false? I put my hand up. No, Drew wouldn't just collaborate my story. We aren't that close, and no, we couldn't just change the readings, again, we aren't that close. Danny is closer with my wife than me. Jake, have you lost your ever-loving mind? Get a grip. As long as you refuse to hear her out, you are going to alienate her? You are going to be in and out of the proverbial doghouse. Jake looked to me and asked, gesturing to Drew, you're going to hash this out in front of them? I retorted, glancing around the group, you asked in front of them. However, we don't have to talk. I am fine with silence. For the next hour, Jake tried to talk to me, trying to make me laugh, get angry and forgive him. Come on, talk to me, yell at me. Just talk to me, he pleaded. I refused to give in to him. The next hour, none of us said anything until Jake looked around with curiosity. I remember this place. We used to meet here when you could get away from Josh. I didn't remember that until now. I swear, we used to leave messages for each other somewhere in here. He searched the tunnel carefully, moving his hand across the wall as we walked. I didn't remember any of what he was saying. Maybe it was one of those implanted memories. I would remember if I had been here with him, right? I would remember sneaking away from Josh to meet Jake, right? What would we have said? What would we have talked about? Did we talk about the fact that I was marrying Josh to save Jake's life? Did he convince me to do it? I didn't remember any of it. If he was telling the truth, why did I not remember? Why did I have implanted memories and missing memories? Maybe Jake did too, I didn't know. Why all this tampering with our memories? What were these people really hiding? Five minutes later, Jake reached up into an exposed pipe and pulled out a stack of letters, and as he did, a chip dropped to the ground. I leaned over and picked up the chip. I slid it into the slit in the side of my Quan pad. When the information came onto the screen, it was encoded. Of course, it is encoded, I said in a low tone. I sent the file to my friend Fireball. I sent it to Fireball to decode. She speaks, Jake quipped. I rolled my eyes, pointing forward. We continued our trek until we reached a wall. I tapped it several times in a unique sequence before the doors slid open. Then I motioned the group inside. I touched the walls of the room, flooded by memories of fights and tender moments that occurred between Jake and me and me and Josh. I pulled out a black light device from my sleeve cuff. I turned it on and flashed it at the wall. I started at the left corner, recording the words that appeared. I remembered I wrote everything I found on that wall in invisible ink when the guards took my research, when they took my Quan pad because I tried to contact the outside world. It was as if it never occurred to them that I might want to go home, to resume my life. They gaslit me by telling me I was specifically chosen for this mission, that maybe I was not up to the task if I wanted to go home, that I was not as smart or as talented as they thought me to be. I remembered feverishly writing all my findings on the walls, the floors, whatever surface I could find. Did I find the cure? I felt as if I did, or was close to it when, when something happened. What happened that prevented me from? I remember being all caught up with the marrying Josh thing because they were going to kill Jake. I wrinkled my brow, getting a sinking feeling in my stomach. Did they know I found the cure or was about to and focused my attention elsewhere? Was finding the cure not their goal? I felt so weak in the knees just thinking about it that I grabbed the back of a nearby chair. Emotions and memories started to flood back with such vigor that I nearly collapsed under them barely hearing Drew and Jake ask me if I was all right. 
Suddenly the doors slammed shut behind us. Then the voice filled the room, saying, You have returned to the scene of the crime sooner than anticipated, but we are glad you are all here. I'd like to welcome you to the start of the end for you all. Take me to your parents, and marry Philippe, and we will let the others go. You have 48 hours to make up your mind. If you choose not to, you and your companions are going to be eliminated. Your time starts now. What do you want with my parents? I demanded, looking up. You have to know where they are. They are in this compound just like the rest of us. They escaped eight years ago. Tell us where they are. Living here is not as tortuous as all of you make it out to be. Just accept your fate. Being married to Philippe will come with power, currency and a lot of perks. I don't know where my parents are, first of all. I thought they were here, and you are going to kill my companions and me if I agree. So far no one I have dealt with on this planet besides Josh have been without an agenda of killing me. I cannot trust that you are telling me the truth either way. Just then more memories started to surface. You broke our deal. What did I tell you was going to happen if you broke our deal? You said that you were going to reveal all my secrets, but you know nothing. Do I now? I am betting you did not want me to remember. Justin Barrymore, Lauren Reese, Gwen Ireland, shall I tell them how you have stolen, killed, cheated, held captive and poisoned? You cannot tell anyone anything if you are put out of your misery. The thing is that I have copies of what I know that will be distributed to all the key people of Kilo 8 once you do that. All I have to do is say the code word to my people, and they will distribute them right now. I nursed my growing migraine. Since you have broken our deal, let me do that right now. I grabbed my Quan pad. All I have to do is message my lawyer, who is going to distribute what I know. You are lying. Maybe I am. Maybe I am not. But can you take the chance considering most of your crimes are punishable by death on Kilo 8? I tilted my head and pretended to think. Maybe I will reveal all I know about the members of the island committee and how you all orchestrated the disease. What are you talking about? We brought all these doctors onto this planet to cure it. You are delusional. I don't remember why, but I know that it is somewhere in my memory that has been coming back at rapid speed. What I do know is that I am very close to solving this disease. I am the one who came up with the protocol that has been keeping people alive. Why would you think we would have a problem with that? It is why we brought you here, to solve this disease. That is what you want people to believe. You can't have me solving this disease, now can you? It defeats the purpose of taking out all the doctors who tried to cure it. It defeats the purpose of killing everyone on your list. The list that is written in invisible ink on the wall of the Island Committee Citadel. You have clearly gone insane. It is time for me to put you and your companions out of their misery. Unfortunately, the Mastership will not let me kill you all yet. When the voice went silent, even after my persistent taunting, I sent the information on my Quan pad to my attorney and to the IIB. I also alerted Graham to where we were and that we needed agents in the vicinity to be on high alert in case we needed them. How much of that is true, Jake prompted, raising his eyes to meet mine. All of it. I had all the information on them, and I had the cure. They know I had it, but somehow I did not remember I had it until that conversation. If you would like to learn more about Anigail or to purchase her fiction and nonfiction books, go to AnigailLines.com. That is A N N A G A I L L Y N E S dot com. Right now you can buy three ebooks and get the fourth one free. There you can sign up for the newsletter to keep up to date on what is happening in the world of the Anigail Lines podcast, where she inspires people to take control of their lives, and her science fiction podcast, the Space Tastic Mysteries podcast. To follow her on social media, it is Anigail Lines on Twitter, Lady Anigail on TikTok, Anigail Lines artist on Instagram. At the Anigail Lines podcast on YouTube, you can join the Facebook page at Author Anigail. Thank you for listening and thank you for being you.